Monkey D. Dragon is him. Spoilers for chapter 1097 ahead. If you have not read the chapter yet, go and do that right now. We have gotten so much more information about Dragon, Ivankov, the Revolutionaries, Kuma, and so many more characters. This chapter is going to be so formative in our understanding of the Revolutionaries and Dragon. At the start of chapter 1097, we see Kuma as a priest who takes away the pain of old people in Sorbet Kingdom. Sorbet Kingdom is very interesting as we've learned that there's not very many young people who live in the kingdom anymore. It seems to be a lot of old people. Now, what we know about Sorbet Kingdom, which we learned in this chapter, is that the taxes that they have to pay to the Celestial Dragons, the Heavenly Tribute, is extremely expensive and it pretty much takes everything that they have. Now, I think that this plays into why there aren't very many young people on the island as those who probably can amass some form of money go somewhere with better opportunity. Now, the leadership and the king on Sorbet Kingdom decides to cut the country in half and essentially dehumanize the southern half of the country and make them no longer citizens. This means that they won't have to pay the taxes for those people anymore who were the old people that Kuma's taking away the pain from. This is so big because it shows that more than just the celestial dragons are participating in injustice around the world. Now, it could be argued that this injustice is kind of caused by the celestials because it is you know, the heavenly tax that Sorbet Kingdom must pay in order to remain part of the world government. However, the king can definitely do more than just cut off half of the country and dehumanize them. I think that's so sick. But after we see Kuma and Ginny get arrested, we see Dragon and Ivankov appear on Sorbet Kingdom and break them out of jail. Before this, though, we see Kuma had spoke about Dragon. He actually looked up to him. He had heard about Dragon before. And, you know, we know that Kuma is someone who cares about others very deeply. And him looking up to Dragon, I think, signifies that it's truly someone who's worthy. Someone who's worthy of Kuma's praise. It does not come cheaply. You have to earn it. This has been shown with the Straw Hats when Zoro took the pain of Luffy on Thriller Bark. Kuma makes you prove yourself before he's willing to ally with you, to help you, to do many things. And I think we'll need to pay attention to this going forward a little bit in One Piece, you know, if we're looking at the next few chapters, because Kuma will arrive at Egghead soon. I think this flashback is coming to an end, so I think by chapter 1099 or chapter 1100, we will see Kuma on Egghead. Now back to chapter 1097. After Ivankov and Dragon break them out, we don't really see too much more from Kuma and Jenny, but we do get a lot more information on Monkey D. Dragon, the man himself. As many have predicted, he was a Marine. This isn't really too surprising, and we can see that in the chapter, Dragon is trying to, in a sense, recreate the Marines in the Revolutionary Army. This has some people theorizing that potentially Joy Boy started the Marines, or what they be, what is now known as the Marines in the past, which I think could maybe make a little bit of sense, but I feel like is a little bit of a stretch. I feel like it would make a lot more sense for the armies of the 20 founding kingdoms to have then come together to form the Marines, which would then protect those 20 kingdoms. I find it really hard to believe that an outside army or an opposing force to the 20 kings would somehow allow them to fight for them. It just doesn't make a lot of sense in my book. But knowing this and Dragon's mission to recreate this fighting force that fights for good instead of injustice, as we know the Marines support all of the injustice that the Gorosei and Celestial Dragons cause. They enable it. Without them, people wouldn't stand for it. As we saw with the Don Quixote family, all right, the people tried to kill them. They hated the Celestial Dragons, but because they knew they had no government protection, they tried to do whatever they could to them. Now that when Celestial Dragons do have government protection and there's the, always the threat of an admiral showing up at whatever call that the Celestial wants to make, that is a big threat in the One Piece world that a lot of people downplay. That keeps people in line. The Marines are a threatening force that supports the Celestial Dragons and Dragon stands against this. Okay, Monkey D. Dragon does not support the ideals of the Marines. This is most likely why he broke away. Now, we haven't seen him at God Valley, but I feel like he heard about what happened there, and that was a big part of him adjusting his philosophies and breaking off and then 
going and forming the Revolutionary Army. We know that Dragon is one of two pillars of the Revolutionary Army until Kuma joins. Him and Ivanka, and then after Kuma joins, Kuma becomes the third pillar. I believe that before Kuma joins, the Revolutionary Army simply stood against the Celestial Dragons and in injustice. We hear that from Dragon, who spoke about their lack of funding and their mission of arming and supporting different revolutions around the world. But what I think happens is after Kuma joins, something changes. That's why they go from the Freedom Fighters before Kuma joins to the Revolutionary Army after he joins. There's clearly a big change that happens in their philosophies, and I think this is because of Nika. We know that Kuma has first-hand knowledge of Nika's existence because his father told him that one day Nika would come and save him and all these stories about Nika, which clearly impacts Kuma because Kuma then went on to tell those same stories to Bonnie. If, that did, if it wasn't impactful on him, he wouldn't have become a priest who took away the pain of old people. That's what Joy Boy does. He, he brings people happiness. That's, I'm, I'm assuming that's what Kuma kind of felt like he was doing in that process. But seeing all of this with Dragon, it really makes you wonder how the revolutionaries changed when Kuma joined. I don't think they're simply fighting for freedom from the celestial dragons anymore. I think they're fighting for liberation, true liberation, not just from a government or pirates or something. It's from the entire world. So people are free to do whatever they want as they please, which is very similar to Luffy and Luffy's dreams. I really believe that Dragon and Luffy have a very, very similar goal in that is to provide you know freedom like, obviously we know that luffy wants to become king of the pirates all right that's what he like wants that's his goal but he has a, another another dream and i believe this dream and dragons you know his goal maybe dragon's dream are very closely aligned and i think we'll start to learn more about this in the coming chapters finally dragon has proven himself to be a very capable leader in this chapter he's able to break into the king, uh, sorbet kingdom break kuma and Jenny out of jail he reveals so much information to us about his history in the Marines, which he didn't leave because he was weak. He, he left because he stood against what the Marines were fighting for. There's so much information that we've gotten about Dragon in this chapter that has solidified him as a powerful character who is a motivating character in a very similar sense to Luffy. This might be part of the, of the initial D that... It maybe allows you to kind of rally people. We've seen it with Dragon, with Luffy, with Garp even, with being able to rally Kobe and Helmeppo and turn them into excellent Marines in such a short amount of time. People really overlook that. Yeah, it might have been 10 years in our books, but it was only like three months in the One Piece world. Garp clearly did something similar to his son, you know, made it, turned him into a very strong Marine. And this strength didn't just disappear when he left the Marines. He's put it towards his true goal, which I believe is freedom and liberation of all people so that they can pursue their dreams. I think that Dragon will continue to play a big part in the story going forward. That's why we're starting to hear about him a lot more now. I feel like Oda has sort of done this recently, introduced characters in a sort of flashback or in a sort of, you know, this character is present type of way, you know, keep them in the back of your mind. And I think that's what he's doing right now with Dragon. I think I don't think Dragon will show up on Egghead. I know I made a video in the past stating that. However, I think that with some of the recent changes, um, with Kuma flying there, with this chapter in particular, I feel like Dragon coming and saving them just isn't too likely. Let me know what you guys think of this video down in the comments. I'm considering making Invincible content. I know the Season 2 starts in a couple weeks, so let me know what you guys think of that. And I'll see you guys in the next One Piece video.